by Francis Feldman on, starting on May 11th. This is for the Oral Histories Project of the California Social Welfare Archives. George, how did you get into social work? I was graduated from Pasadena High School, class of 1924. I enrolled with Pasadena Junior College in their pioneer class. Later, it was called the Pasadena City College. There was, I wasn't very much of a student, but one of the professors in PJC by the name of Hattersley, H-A-T-T-E-R-S-L-E-Y, taught a social science class I thought that would be a cinch class to take, but he had a textbook by Burgess, sociologist. sociologist from the University of Chicago, wasn't he? And he gave us assignments in that book, and that was like a splash of cold water. It, Hold on. Let's my grades rose from... C's and B's to A's and B's. My objective came to be a teacher. USC had to go back to that point. Is it all right? It's going now. To make a long story short, I wound up with an AB degree a master's in sociology, a certificate in social work, and within one course of, of an education degree. Financing the above was a major problem. I worked for a Pasadena florist, decorating floats at tournament time, and working on parties at the Huntington and other hotels in Pasadena at 50 cents an hour. At USC, I tutored track and football players became the so circulation manager of the sociology publication so sociology and social res research I one of the teachers at Holmby, Holmby College and Westlake School for Girls became ill and had to drop out and I was given the assignment of teaching those girls and that helped out quite a bit. What year was this now? Let's see, I, gra I graduated with a class of 29. I think it was around 1932. Right at the, in the depths of the Depression. Right in the depths of the Depression. Uh, I, had, I was the circulation manager, as I said, of sociology and social research. I did some moving picture reviews when it came time and it, when it came time to take my field work for the certificate in social work, my assignment was to work with the single with the single men's K 
place well, in the, well, downtown Los Angeles. I was, assi I was assigned to one of the caseworkers, and he gave me each week, he'd give me a list of his cases, and my assignment was to call on him in their boarding house, their rooming house, on 5th Street, and I would call on him, visit with him a little while, and then report to my superior about once a week that they were alive, and that's all he was interested in. And he told me one time, by the way, if ever you have to make a food assignment, try this restaurant on South, whatever the street was. They, they know us and they will give us free lunches. So. Then my other assignment, my first casework assignment on my own was to go out to Rancho Los Amigos and try to talk some of the able-bodied residents to move out into rooming houses off the, so that they could have Rancho Los Amigos for the very disabled and sick persons. It was still then the county poor farm. That's right. It, that's right. It was. But it wasn't called the county poor farm. But I don't think I was successful in getting any of the people to move out of Rancho Los Amigos. Where would they have moved? Well, if they were willing to move, we would find a, a room in one of the rooming houses that were catering to the indigents. And were they all on skid row? Most of them were, yes. I don't remember that I received very much by way of instruction and in my field work. But I was still taking courses from, I took courses in the sociology department from every one of the faculty members there. <clears throat> I met Helen, my bride-to-be, in the sociology department where she was secretary to Dean Bogardus. As the Depression wore on, federal funds began coming into California, and one of the grants was a $40,000 grant to Kern County. As I recall, the school, the State Department of Social Welfare was used by the federal government to see that capable employees were hired to administer the funds rather than just any untrained departments. So the State Department of Social Welfare, whenever they had a grant come in, would call among others, the School of Social Work at USC to find out if they had any one to recommend for the 
assignment. Kern County was one of the first counties to receive a grant. It was a $40,000 grant. And Helen and I were close to the telephone at the time the call came in to Dr. McClanahan asking if she had anyone to recommend. And Dr. McClanahan said, I'm just about out of people to recommend. But Helen spoke up and says, what about George? How about George? So, make a long story short, I went up to Kern County to be interviewed for the assignment of director of case of, I forget what the title was. <clears throat> I'll never forget the day I, we were talking to the member of the Board of Supervisors who was responsible for, for getting this program underway. We were talking to Edda Frost, who was the director of the County Welfare Department in Kern County, and I wanted to show that I was well trained. I asked where they kept the case records of the clients in Kern County, and so this supervisor, who had a great sense of humor, leaned over and whispered in my ear, she keeps them in the lining of her hat. <laughs> <clears throat> they made me an offer, and I was so spellbound by the size of the offer that I didn't say anything. In Los Angeles, I think my monthly salary was $113 a month. And from that, they would deduct certain expenses. So when Kern County made the offer, and I can't think of what it was right now, the supervisor thought I was hesitating because it wasn't enough money, when actually I was hesitating because I was dumbfounded that I would be offered that much. And he said, well, this is a new assignment for us. We don't know just what this position is worth. I just gave you the figure just now. And we could make that another hundred dollars a month without any trouble, I'm sure. So I took the job in Kern County. What was the 40000 to cover? Was it for administrative costs or was it for welfare costs too? It was for it was for both administrative costs and unemployment relief. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that we didn't operate very long before we received additional grants. And sometime after that the State Department of Social Welfare was not in charge of this program, but they set up the California Relief, uh, California Unemployment, Unemployment Relief, Emergency Relief Association. That was then uh, part of the Federal Emergency Relief Administration yeah. instituted by uh, Roosevelt. That's right. I set up a small department. I brought up some of my associates in Los Angeles who were well trained. Rebecca Stanton was one of them. And who was the other one? can't think of the other's name. He's on our 
bored, but he never comes to the meeting. Martin Ruderman. Martin Ruderman. And another social worker whose name slips me. And then I was found that some of the local people were not too happy about my bringing people in from the outside. So we had to temper that with some appointments from within. How did the people in the community react to the idea of having money for welfare for the unemployed? Since Kern County was such a conservative county. Some of the, the general reaction was very favorable. We developed some experiments since Kern County was raised a lot of cotton and the work it wasn't the Works Project Administration, I believe. Yeah, that, that was before the, the Civil Works Administration. Yeah. But that only lasted three months. That's right. We developed some projects on an experimental basis. One of them was a mattress making project. We couldn't, we couldn't sell the mattresses, but we could give them to the people for our relief. And that was so successful that the mattress manufacturers protested to either the state or the federal, I forget which, and we had to stop making the mattresses. Then we experimented in a sewing project where the clients would make dresses which would be distributed to the migratory workers and the county welfare caseload. Some of the map some of the dresses were something to behold. They were as big as small tents, and others were like doll size. We were had the responsibility for distributing surplus foods. We had one of our staff who was unemployed. He had been a dis train dispatcher with the Santa Fe out of Bakersfield, but due to the depression, they had to reduce their staff, so he came to work for us. And his job was to distribute the food, surplus food, to the poor people, the indigents. And he, I, I didn't supervise him too much. He did a very good job. In fact, he did such a good job that we found out later that he was suggesting to some of these people if they could vote that he was going to run for supervisor, <laughs> county supervisor, and he did and made it. So you, in a sense, were responsible for his being supervised. Yes. We were responsible for several 
organizations. We did it. We had a, a role to play in strengthening several organizations, one of which was the Workers' Alliance that paid their respects to my office periodically. Let's pause a minute because uh, uh, I don't know how many people besides you and me remember that the Workers' Alliance uh, was a, actually a union of unemployed uh, recipients of assistance. That's right. And they were very effective. And, of course, they, what we were able to give was not all we'd like to give, so we were waited upon by the Workers' Alliance every now and then. The county, we had, we were better able, we were able to give with our funding more than the county welfare department was budgeted to give. So we had a county welfare association develop, developing. We had the county welfare and the County Welfare Association were very strong and were not too friendly to the Unemployment Relief Program because the Unemployment Relief Program was able to do more than they were. There had been a County Welfare uh, California Conference of Social Work, and it was uh, it wasn't a very strong organization at at the start, but each year it became stronger, and the annual meetings of the California Conference of Social Work became quite exciting because the California Conference of Social Work became the catalytic agent that was the sounding board for the Workers' Alliance, for the County Welfare Department, for the State Department of Social Welfare, and for the unemployment insurance, the unemployment program. One way of expressing a viewpoint was to introduce at the annual meeting of the Conference of Social Work the resolutions and there, it was not uncommon to have 15 or 20 or 30 re resolutions on all manner of subjects introduced at the conference meetings. So many resolutions are introduced that the meeting of the conference ran way over time and people missed their train we didn't have planes then back to their home. Sometimes the feeling about a specific resolution was so strong that tempers were lost. I remember one 
time when Charles Shotman was in charge of the res res resolutions and he saw that some of them were going to be pretty rough. So he had me draft a resolution that, to the effect that we were in favor of motherhood. The purpose of that was to get a laugh and relieve the tension, which I was successful in doing. Was Charles then the president of he the was association? The president. Yes. Well, one of the successful projects in Kern County was that of building a new social welfare and related buildings. Kern County had in certain sections real good clay soil and was readily made into bricks. So we had a extensive work project making adobe bricks. The adobe bricks were later made into a building to house the welfare department and some of the other county departments. to get the time sequence on some of these things. We had a field staff. The State Relief Administration had a field staff. And the field, our field representative visited, visited the county from time to time. And after two or three, three or four years, I'm not sure which, I'll have to look it up, I was offered a position on the field staff of the Relief Administration covering the counties from San Mateo to Ventura. San Francisco and, and Los Angeles had their own staff and uh, operation. But I then moved to San I was married in the meantime and then moved to Santa Cruz to take on the assignment of, on the field staff of the State Relief Administration. I, I remember very vividly the experience we had in Santa Clara County where the unemployment 
unemployed population was extremely large, and the relief we extended was in the form of cash each month. And the poor fellow who ran the program in Santa Clara County was finding, before he could get the first eligibility established, the ones he established a month before and had received relief were coming in for their second checks. I forget how many months it was before I could get visit my counties below Santa Clara. service. Again, I don't have the precise time. I was offered position the director of social service in the State Relief Administration. promoted to director of social service working out of San Francisco. But before, before I left my field work position, we moved to Santa Cruz. And I worked out of Santa Cruz up and down Coast County. Then I was promoted to Director of Social Service for the Relief Administration with headquarters in San Francisco. That was for the state as a whole. The state as a whole, with the exception of San Francisco. And Los Angeles. Well, they still had their own county. They had their own director. Well, let's see. Uh, now, it was Charles uh, Shotland then the director of the State Relief Administration? And you were a social services director under him? Well, I'm not sure about that. I th <clears throat> I think Charlie Shotman had that position and was transferred. Somewhere else. Pomeroy. Oh, Pomeroy. Hugh Pomeroy. You, you, not you. Not you. I don't think it was you. That's his brother. The Pomeroy's were very political. Extremely political. And Pomeroy was the head of the State Relief Administration. I was the director of social service. And
county welfare people were friendly up to a point. There was some hostility about the unemployment relief program coming in. and interfering with the relationship the county welfare departments had. Occasionally we had In Kern County and in each county, there was a advisory board to direct and help where they could the program. In Kern County, there was some feeling that the Relief Administration was taking some of the jobs away from the agriculture program there. We had a advisory board consisting of community leaders. The chairman of the board, as I recall, was with utility company, Pacific Gas and Electric, operating in Kern County. We would meet about once every two or three months to get the word from representative pertaining to the county pertaining, pertaining to what the latest federal programs were and to hear any complaints that citizens had in the county it was a our board was a successful one because we had a good field representative in one of the adjacent counties Fresno the relief administration was not in the least bit popular County is different. Yeah, so I think we can start again now. Early in nineteen thirty eight. Word came up from Los Angeles that there was a gentleman 
inquiring if he could have the privilege of talking to one of the social workers in our program for the purpose of hiring him. They wanted help. His organization wanted help to pass a measure called a small loan law. And he was interviewing interested people in Los Angeles. And he was coming up to San Francisco. Did we have any objection if he interviewed people in the SRA? Well, we had no objection because the SRA was considered a temporary organization. And we would like to see our staff placed in good permanent jobs. He came up to San Francisco after a few days and we had a list of people who might be interested in our program and we made a room available for him to interview them and scheduled the interviews. After interviewing our members of our staff for two, two or three days, he came into my office to thank me for the courtesies extended. And I said, by any chance, did you find someone who appealed to you? And he says, yes, I did. He said, that person is you. He hadn't interviewed me or anything before. Then he proceeded to tell me what they were interested in. They were a small loan company. And I didn't know anything about a small loan company. Didn't even know there were loan sharks. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> he, he said his company, Beneficial, had been interested in passing a small loan law which would permit companies such as his to operate legally. They had tried first in 1932 and in each legislative session since to pass a small loan law. But they were always defeated in their efforts by a group of companies who made loans but were not under any law to regulate their rates and beneficial was not going to operate in the state with that condition. And he said their company always felt that theirs was a piece of social legislation that social workers and others should be interested in. And for the 1939 session of the legislature, they wanted to put a, a social worker on the staff of Beneficial to help spread the word about this law that Beneficial was supporting. I was very much concerned about maintaining my professional status, so I wasn't sure whether going with a company like that was the thing for me to do or not. <clears throat> and I 
told him I had some concern along that line. Well, he mentioned Ralph Nugent in the Russell Sage Foundation and the Uniform Small Loan Law that the Russell Sage Foundation was sponsoring. And one of the staff of the foundation, Joanna Calcord, and he said, if you are really interested, we'd like to invite you to come back to our headquarters in Newark, New Jersey, and then pick out any of your social work contacts and call on them. treatment naturally. And I talked to the people at the Russell Sage Foundation and they said that as far as they were concerned beneficial was a legitimate company the Russell Sage Foundation had a model, small loan law. Beneficial use most of that, but for a number of reasons, didn't take the law in its entirety. I met the chief executive officer, Mr. Charles Watts. Mr. Watts was the founder of Beneficial and had a conviction that small loan law was social legislation and he convinced me that this was an opportunity I should take, even though I was taking it with reluctance. They wanted me to work in California during the coming session of the legislature, not to call on legislators to do lobbying, but rather to explain the small loan law to social workers, legal aid society people, better business bureaus, and any social welfare organizations that, such as councils of social agencies and so on. When I made calls on social work groups. Not once, but many times they would tell me that they would permit me to speak to whatever group they represented, but it must be understood that interest in the small loan law, their interest in the small loan law was only for emergency purposes. They wouldn't stand for small loan laws, for vacations, for recreational activities, just emergencies. And then with reluctance, that's quite a contrast between small loan law in 39 and the present appeal for well I oh before I 
ਮਨ ਦੇ ਕੰਡੀਸ਼ਨਸ ਬੈਨੀਫਿਸ਼ਲ ਪ੍ਰਪੋਜ ਵਾਸ ਦੈਟ ਐਸ ਸੂਨ ਐਸ ਦਿਸ ਸਮਾਲ ਲਾਵ ਵਾਸ ਪਾਸਡ ਇਨ ਕੈਲੀਫੋਰਨੀਆ ਐਂਡ ਦੇ ਹੈਡ ਟਾਈਮ ਐਂਡ ਦੇ ਹੈਡ ਆਰਗਨਾਈਜ਼ਡ a new trade association made up of the licensed lenders and i might add parenthetically that there was a small loan law in california but there was no limit on the rate that could be charged and the result was a great deal of criticism of the small loan business by better business bureaus legal aid societies and the like why and they had a, a trade association which was more or less a lobby body and beneficial if when the law was passed that organized a new trade association and they would want me to be the executive secretary of the of that association it was beneficial conviction that each of the trade associations in the United States should have as its executive a trained social worker and I would be and there were several several of the states had social workers on the staff of their association as the executive secretary unfortunately most of them were not too well suited and they didn't work out properly well when the small loan law was passed in california it wasn't the model law of the russell sage foundation but it was pretty close to that i might add that when they were talking to me about taking the position they quoted the rate as being 3% and i thought to myself well they can't be too bad well, the mortgage on my house is 4.5% they didn't say at the time that that was per month 36 which was 36% per year when the law was passed in California that year the high rate lenders used the referendum process and circulated a petition against this small loan law which permitted legal rates up to 3 up to 36% per year well what were these others charging whatever they wanted to there was no limit on the rate uh-huh. they could charge anything the traffic was there Mm-hmm. The Russell Sage Foundation bill had a $300 ceiling at a rate of 3% per month. Mm-hmm. Uh, so 
So the high-rate lenders in California used the referendum process, and they circulated petitions to put on the November ballot a bill that would defeat the small loan rate that was presuming to charge 36 percent per year. Well, I had my work cut out for me to explain what this referendum did. And when election came in November, people voted and they defeated the proposed rescinding of the small loan law. But I had been for a whole year with beneficial and some of the other lenders felt that I was too much tainted with the beneficial viewpoint and couldn't be objective as the trade association executive. And so beneficial suggested that why not just stay with us, we can use you. And I did and spent 40 years with beneficial. Incidentally, Earl Warren was the governor during that period. California, beneficials sought to pass small loan laws in other states in the West. There were laws, small loan laws, most of the eastern states, and on some of them, as I said, they had social workers working with them. One of the activities which I participated and was proud of my participation was the Consumer Credit Counseling Service. I might correct that state that we use every opportunity to explain the small loan law as social legislation. And the longer we did that, the more interest was manifested by councils of social agencies, individual social workers on consumer credit and money management. And my 
work is beneficial. I spent quite a bit of time in Arizona. One of my associates there in a competing company was Richard Steinman, who used to be with Beneficial as, the, as its advertising manager. He moved to Phoenix after he resigned from Beneficial because he was, his son was bothered with asthma and he resigned and set up his own company in Phoenix. Being an advertising man, I'm quite an extrovert. He saw great opportunities in consumer credit conferences. In one time when I was talking to Dick Steinman, <clears throat> He set up an appointment with a referee in bankruptcy in Phoenix. So we, the referee said that many of the families he has to put through bankruptcy would not need to do that if they had some counseling and some way to straighten out their debts. And why don't you fellas in the loan business work out something? Dick Steinman was had it carried a lot of weight with the lenders and I carried some weight with the social work group. Mr. Steinman took this suggestion from the referee and took it to the other lenders and to beneficial. I took this suggestion and recommendation to the educators and social workers, the legal aid people. <clears throat> And we organized a, a program called Family Debt Counselors. About the same time, a company in Ohio took upon themselves to counsel a few families on their debt problems. But this program was a very limited one. We organized family debt counselors with one paid staff member
board of directors consisting, for the most part, with educators, with educators, social worker, legal aid, Better Business Bureau, as well as one or two lenders. We set the program up. Our program in Phoenix took off. deliberately and had a plan for the majority of the board the none lending Change the name to Consumer Credit Counseling and Family Debt Counseling. The program took off. Unbelievable speed. We had, we soon had inquiries from all over the country wanting to know how to organize the credit counseling service. Association meeting we had part of the program of the annual meeting devoted to credit counseling. Before long, the inquiries were so many that we had to work out some method of handling them. We were told, we were told about an organization in Washington the National Foundation for Consumer Credit which at that stage its existence had very little to do, yet having been organized during the war when credit was when credit granting was limited by 
regulation W. One thing led to another, and we were able to use the National Foundation for Consumer Credit <coughs> as a national organization to do research in field of money management. Was that its name at the time? Was it the Consumer Credit? National Foundation. National Foundation. Foundation. Same as it is today. Uh, yes. I'm pretty sure it was. I'll, mm -hmm. I'll check. Mm -hmm. I'll follow up on that. California, uh, the National Foundation, had, I can't think of his name. The executive? Yes, I'll, I'll come to that later. Mm -hmm. but, It wasn't long before California became very much interested in credit counseling program. I had a great deal to do with the California development. One of the communities needing the service as much as any was Los Angeles. We did our best to get that program going, but it didn't take off as rapidly as National Foundation set up a board of directors, much as we established. other states that had a national organization on which I served for a number of years. We Immediately when I, I served on the board of reformed the Consumer Credit Counseling Service organization whose job it was to organize and promote local services. At the present time, there are about 13 
comes to those services. I help to organize. George, will you say a word about how they're financed? Yes. Present time, their credit counseling services are financed primarily by people in the finance business, the consumer finance companies such as Household Beneficial and the like. And by the contributions of those who benefit by the service. As the program develop and the interest grew, no pun intended, the banks and the credit unions and mortgage lenders, any to contribute to the budget. Each service has its budget. And each financial organization was asked to contribute funds to the operation of the service. had trouble getting some in the, in the business field, the finance field, to contribute. But for the most part, the needed financing was accomplished without difficulty. As the program developed, the different services developed. special programs. San Francisco and Los Angeles have educators on the board from the home economics and business education departments. They develop educational manuals and train per 
persons to, to conduct consumer education programs. No two of the services are exactly alike. In San Francisco, Home Economics Department of San Francisco State developed quite a training program for students who are interested in working with one or more of the services, working with the, in the programs. The National Foundation developed a manual covering the various steps in organizing a counseling program. Beneficial gave me carte blanche to help wherever I could. in organizing counseling services. Most of my contacts were in the West, including Hawaii. I think there are some 200 counseling services in the United States and almost in about 20 in California. That was a program that I was proud to be associated with. And very successful at the present time. The executive of the Los Angeles service and some of her staff give talks to high schools, classes of high school students. Credit counseling services are sponsored uh, the credit counseling services are got my point there. Counseling services are sponsored by they are organized in different ways. Quite a number of the counseling services in the country are affiliated or supported by or work as an adjunct of family service agencies. It depends
the National Board of Consumer Credit Counselors has is supposed to has the majority of its members from the non-business field, which is a condition we try to enforce with all of the agencies having to have on the board the majority of the board members from the non-business field to avoid criticism that this is a program that the businessmen have to bail out their mistakes. My assignment was beneficial. Has been quite rewarding. When I first went with beneficial and I wasn't there long before. I had a call from Eric Biddle, who was working on a program to bring guest children from Great Britain over to the United States. For the duration of the war, I was recommended as a, one of the staff members who might handle being a social worker, I could handle the evaluation of the home to which the child would be sent. And being with a consumer finance company, I was qualified. They thought I was qualified to evaluate the financial ability of the of the local family to take care of it. The beneficial suggest that I take the lead since it was just temporary and they held my place open with beneficial. We didn't get, we, the program was financed <clears throat> by Marshall Field. We traveled the country to explain what we were trying to do. We had applications from all of the prominent people in the United States offering to take the child or children. You want to stop, George? <clears throat> I 
This is gone today. You want a drink? What do you got? Scotch? You want some scotch? No. I'll provide it. <laughs> Field project didn't, didn't last too long because I think I dictated something yes, about you, it. Yes, you it. gave that. Mm -hmm. And then we, as a group, traveled around the country. There were about five or six of us who were the core operators of the project, and I have a, some material reporting on what we did, but I, it's in my file somewhere, and I'll get it out and bring it, but it was a very interesting project mm -hmm. while it lasted, but it was just uh, I found that uh, many of the motion picture. Okay. It was quite an interesting experience while it lasted. Marshall Field charged a DC three television was just beginning, and I remember one stop we made was at the Ambassador Hotel in Los Angeles, and uh, they had a demonstration of television. Marshall Field was in the auditorium and we were standing at the entrance to the hotel and it was a tele television there and it showed Marshall Field talking about the child care program and we were standing outside the ambassador seeing it on this The union is television. I had the task of going down to Washington to the State Department to get their cooperation and convince them that we were not bringing children over that would be dependent on the United States, but we were bringing them over as guests. And we had the wherewithal to take care of them. Were they placed all over the country or just in California? Actually, very few were participa participated in the project. And they were placed mostly in the East and in the Middle West. took a leave of that and this was before we, our country was in the war. There was no consumer credit was under Regulation W. Most of the money went into the war effort. So leave of absence were encouraged. The project that took I, I was, I remember I was 37 years old and just about the time that I think the 40 was the top limit that they, they could draft anybody. Charlie Shotman was setting up the program.
man. What was that program, program that they had where they would... The military government? Military government program. And he wanted me to enlist in that, which I decided to do. I hadn't been called for the draft, but I was just on the verge of picking out my uniform when word came through that the government was no longer going to allow any of draft aides to go into these special projects. They'd have to go through the routine. So I, decide, I decided to volunteer. And I remember going down to San Pedro for my, as a, as a draftee, and standing there waiting with about 10 or 12 other fellows. And we were asked to jog and stretch and work up our hard action a little bit, and when they came to me, to my surprise, they told me that I wouldn't be taken because I had a heart murmur. You didn't know it. Well, I did know it, but my doctors, whenever I had a physical, they say, oh, that's just a functional murmur. Mm -hmm. It isn't anything, but the military doctors took it as a real thing. So they rejected me. Beneficial encouraged me to take a leave of absence, which I did. And about that time, they were, we were getting very active in the war effort and needed all the labor we could to build P-38s. And it was necessary most of the men of military age were in the were in the in the military, and there was a shortage of labor. So they decided to use women, and they organized the child care coordinating committee for children of working mothers to provide the needed labor to build a. And I was put in charge. We had this committee. Whit Pfeiffer of the Welfare Planning Council was chairman of the committee. And I was the one who worked the active participant. The military government provided some extra help, too. And We, I remember we had opposition to this project from the Children's Bureau because the place of the mother was in the home taking care of her children. And they, the Children's Bureau finally agreed that this was a temporary measure and they had to go along with it. Was the Catholic Church also opposed? No, they said it was against their beliefs, but this was the war, and war effort, and they had to go along. We had federal funds to provide the child care centers and we staff the centers with competent people. But that was the end of 
placing the mother in the home when the war effort was over. The women, the mothers, still wanted to continue working. And we had the child care centers in Los Angeles County. But we had no funds to finance them. So Gus Hawkins, who was in the assembly at that time, and Ernest Geddes, who was an assemblyman, took it upon themselves to introduce legislation to finance child care centers after the war was over. It was quite a battle at times in the legislature, but as the years went by, there was less objection, and it was there was no problem getting the finance, bill to finance the centers through the legislature. The office of the child care centers, of the child care coordinating committee was my office that I had with an official and my secretary was the secretary to the committee and an official picked up the tab. provided a sympathetic climate for these projects. They had Mr. Watts, who by this time had passed away, but his influence still stayed with the company. We had DeWitt Paul, who was head of public relations and then chief executive office officer beneficial, paid social worker Jesse Gregg, and Lynn Twyman and Dr. Neifeld. They, after the war was over, and the company went back and visited. It, it expanded, and in the West, it was Western states, the western states were states without adequate small loan laws and beneficial took it upon itself to introduce legislation in these states. I used to travel with Mr. Paul, and we visit social workers and social agencies in the western states. When I first went with Beneficial, there wasn't, wasn't much sympathy for the loan business. I 
and the businessmen were skeptical about these social workers. But as time passed, the social workers began to recognize money management problems with their clients. And as the, uh, as the credit counseling program expanded, the businessmen began to see that there was more than meets the eye as far as these do-gooder social workers are concerned. with the social worker, as a social worker, and on my assignment with them official, brought me to the board of family service in Los Angeles. And then to the president of the board and a member, I became in time a member of the board of the Western Region Family Service. <clears throat> I'm the president of the Western Regional Conference of Family Service and then from there to the board of the National Family Service and President of the National Board for three years from 1972 to 1974. At the present time, I am a board member emeritus of both the LA and the National Boards of Family Service. We had two problems with family service at the time I went on the board of family service. We had two We had on our agency boards and on the Western Region boards, we had a great deal of technical discussion and the, and the lay people on our boards were getting discouraged because this was this talk, as far as they were concerned, and these arguments, long-winded arguments that the professional social workers would get into, were discouraging to the businessmen on our board. Among other things, and how I, uh, other activities at the time, I was in the Western in the family service was a, a study made by one of the management consultant firms whose name slips me at the moment, but I'll recall it. And they recommended, among other things, that family service have more lay people on the board and fewer professional social workers because the professional social workers had a tendency to operate with the lay people on the
the board but not using them as much as they should. So from the time this study was made to the present family service boards are mostly lay people, businessmen, and women. The greatest, the most profitable part aspect of my period on the board of National was a study that we another study we had made to decide to study the feasibility of family service and child welfare league and there was one other. Florence Crittenden. Florence Crittenden. See, to study the feasibility of merging the three agencies. Family Service. Board voted not to merge with the league. And that ended the study. In retrospect, I think we should have merged the three agencies, but that's neither here nor there now. Do you recall why they voted against it? Well, it never came. service was afraid of a loss of identity. The Child Welfare League was very active and was doing, in my opinion, an outstanding job. Family service was, again, this is my own opinion, was in something of a rut. Most of the agency activity dealt with individual family problems. As time went by, family uh, service began to operate in a broader scope. Business was recognizing the 
employee personal problems and family service and the wherewithal the training to deal with some of these employee problems and so family service today has a number of projects recommended for corporations such as General Motors and a number of other corporations to be available to use family service for a fee, a family service at the present time is expanding rapidly. It has moved its headquarters from New York to Milwaukee. When I was on the board of Los Angeles Family Service and on the national board, the number one problem we dealt with each time we had a board or executive committee meeting was where is the money coming from for the next six months. We were really short of funds all the time. At the present time, the Los Angeles board and the individual agency boards and the national has all the money, not all the money it needs, but doesn't have to worry about that when they have meetings. So it's quite a different world. Uh, I was to change the subject. I was on the school board of Arcadia for 10 years and was president of the board for two years. That was at a time when Arcadia, high school, resigned from being affiliated with Monrovia High School and set up its own program. That was a very worthwhile experience. began to talk about have, uh, registering social workers. You were active mm -hmm. in that. Could you say a few words about that? You, uh, you were uh, worked through the California conference and also the state legislature. On that. Yes, I was very active in the California Conference of Social Work, and one of the projects of the conference was the registration of social workers. But I can't think of. 
But do you remember any specific things that you did to get that uh, legislation through? easy to talk to on the subject of registration of social workers and the mental health program. social workers and people not connected with the legislature. But sometimes you might uh, uh, think about sharing some of your insights about approaching uh, legislators when there is something that you want to persuade them to do. Uh, and um, uh, then in another connection, I seem to remember your meeting with Monsignor O'Dwyer around the um, continuation of the uh, Lanham Act centers and some early... Oh, we had... That's when we had problems with the Catholic group. It wasn't during the war period when we had the child care centers, but it was after the war period, after the war was over, and the child care centers were no longer financed by the federal government. We, Monsignor O'Dwyer, representing the Catholic group, lobbied very much against appropriating additional funds for child care centers. He was very skillful as a lobbyist. And he was very friendly and had a sense of humor. But he was a very efficient operator. He used to say that he would come to a meeting late 
just in time to make make the motion and speak to the subject that was under consideration at that particular meeting because it used his time more efficiently that way he just needed to spend a small amount of time with a committee or a group just long enough to get his the views of the church expressed and make the motion. Did he actively oppose the, the um, child care centers then? Not during the war, but after. I mean, the, after the war. Yes. I sent him an Ernest Geddes. I'm just as strong as Russ Hawkins and both of them. Outstanding work on the Child Care Center program. Uh, George, you were also active in uh, NASW. Did you yeah. do anything? Uh, I was, I was, uh, I hadn't thought of that. <clears throat> when I was in, living in San Francisco, well, whenever I was eligible, I joined NASW. And I was, a member of the San Francisco chapter. And then when I went with an official, moved to Los Angeles, and was active in the NASW chapter in, in LA. And I became chairman of the chapter, as I recall. Mm -hmm. I'd forgotten about that. We had trying times. There was a a group of which Rose Segura was the chief spokesman. Mm -hmm. And the group she represented was all of social action. And in retrospect, I think they were interested in sabotaging NSW because we would have a meeting all about this time of year and we had a number of hot issues that we were discussing and we would have motions made to dispose of this piece of legislation or action on the part of the NASW. And just about the time we would sort of take it easy for make the motions to adjourn and take it easy for the summer, Rose Segura would come up with another heated matter and get the chapter riled up and that and more 
meetings to be scheduled. But she finally moved away and MASW was a quieter organization. Mm -hmm. I haven't I became an ACSW. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't know how I did that, but I did. Those were tumultuous times. Yes. What was the name? What was the organization? Rosa. Rosa Segura. Rosa What was her organization? Yes. They, they would... I first... I can't remember what it was. They were very active at the State Conference of Social Work. Yes, Max Bogner was in that. Yeah. And Ralph, uh, Raphael Kennigsberg. Oh, yes. That's right. But I don't remember what the group was called. But they always had spicy bits of legislation. They would introduce for discussion at the state conference and always had resolutions for the conference to consider and adopt. And they would, would be, the discussion was hot and heavy during the during the last of each conference, the last hours of each conference at the time resolutions were adopted, it could be introduced and acted on. And people were late getting out and getting away. And the discussions were hot and heavy. And then Rose Segura moved away. And I was over in New Mexico. And I picked up the, one in the Santa Fe, New Mexico. And there was an article that called attracted my attention of this social worker who challenged Santa Fe law that no trucks with, with blaring horns and legal in Mexico without permission of the city fathers mm -hmm. and an arrest was made because there was someone who had had defied the law and had a speaker on it, endorsing the candidacy of Wallace, I think it was. Mm -hmm. And the name of the one who was in charge of all this and was, who was arrested was Rose Segura. And that's the last I ever heard of her. <laughs> I had forgotten about her until you mentioned her now. Do you think of anything else that we should include now. Not right now. <laughs>